Well, like I promised, we're going to start another series uh, through the eyes of a shed hunter. Uh, this time it'll be about a buck we call Brutus, one that really captivated our hearts in the early days when we were making videos. We shot this video probably, well, it came out in 2003, so a couple of years prior to that we were uh, collecting footage. But uh, So we shed hunted quite a while before then, but this is when we started making videos after I got to see uh, Bentley Coben's uh, Treasures in the Buck Brush kind of inspired us to start a few videos. So anyway, I promised that we would get uh, some series going and show you some of the sets and different horns that we would picked up over the years and do these little mini series. So uh, hope you enjoy it and sit back and relax. We're up here today on the breaks of the Clearwater River going through all this nice rose hip brush. Hopefully we're going to come along and score on a nice big white tail horn. There you go. That's what it's all about right there. Hanging in that bush. What a find. Getting that over here. Get Tammy and that dog. See if we can't come up with the other side. up a nice flyer. It's gotten considerably bigger. Boy, that's a dandy. Yeah, that's him. What do you think that one will score? That horn's got to be pushing 70, I'd say, around there. Hopefully he didn't snap his other side off like he did last year. Yeah. We'll get these home and we got another buck to compare up. We had three years, so we'll try to find the other side of this one. Maybe we can compare up a set, of, a couple sets off of this guy. Hey, Dad, got a copy? Yeah, go ahead. I trailer side here on the other side of the ridge. Are you serious? Yep, and it's exactly the same with another little flyer at the base. Awesome. We'll meet up on the ridge and we'll put them together. I'll get Tammy to take you to the other side and then you guys can match him up over there. Okay. You want to take him to the other side, Tammy? We'll get him together there. Oh, that is so cool. Broke off this before there towards the end there. Should score in the 150, though, I think, with these non typical points. He's got really good mass. Oh yeah, those are pretty. Finally, find a nice one and you're able to match them up twice this year now. Everybody's got a set, actually. Well, Tammy doesn't have one, but she's helped us match up both of ours, so that's good. I got a big set at home she helped me with, and then old Mr., uh, what do we call him anyway? Reliable. Reliable, yeah. He, third year. Third year of him, so that's... Third year this guy. That's what it's all about, though, getting out together and helping each other match these up. Yeah. Well, we're here to talk today about a, another set of antlers. Told you we'd get to, some sets together. I got some uh, at the beginning you'll see some really old archive footage. I think clear back when we first produced the videos, this was our first one that we produced and we produced it in 2003. It was from footage from 2002 and 2003, I believe. So, But we picked up a, a buck. My son picked up the first set off him. We called him Brutus in the end because of his tremendous size. He, he picked up uh, the first horn he picked up was this antler right here, and you can see it was a 
the right side it was broken off right after the G3 and uh, it didn't take him long though to to match it up he picked up this other side and it was uh, right at 54 55 inches but we could see that the buck had some potential it had a lot of mass going on and you know it looked like it was going to be something decent so something to go back and hopefully try to match up in the previous year and you know we went back and and of course I, I walked right on to the first side hanging in a bush it was pretty interesting I'll show you those I found this side hanging in a bush it was uh, quite a unique antler it, it had grown quite a bit same exact buck he grew a flyer and just impressive as ever and then Matt didn't take him but about I don't know a half hour or so and he had picked up this side just the same broke again broke broke some on his uh, right side he broke part of it. it looked like it probably could even have been a split G4 but and then he grew this little kicker on the base you know and it after showing some people I showed the local taxidermist Nick the set of antlers and from the previous year and this year and his first words out of his mouth was there is a God you know this deer was really going to be something we scored that um, left antler off the deer um, from the previous year it scored like I said right at 55 inches this antler here grossed with that all the extra on it it grows just under 75 inches so in one year he put on 20 inches of bone so it was obvious this deer was going to blow into a giant and just every, everything going on long eye guards mass you know he just you name it so we saw nothing of him up there throughout the year um, I don't know what happened to him but I went back on the next year to try to find his sheds again that was my total focus was to find this deer's sheds and I went up there I searched from at the end of December uh, clear through to I think the first week of March every single day that I had time to go up there I went up there and that's all I did was look for this I, it ruined my shed season because I just looked for this deer's antlers I wanted these more than anything and what I did find however was this broken up right side and for sure a hundred percent for sure it's off the deer it it was right in the same area but when compared you can see how close the G2 and 3 would have grown but there's a unique thing about the base on this year that it came off it left a little tiny piece of the skull on there and then on the next year you can see right on the base I guess right there where he had grown in that had grown in the piece that was taken off the skull so you know I've showed them to other people and beyond the doubt they're the same deer but that's all I could come up with and, and we figure by the tiny base this is probably the deer's maybe his second year's growth I, it's hard to say but I'm going to say two this would have been three and this would have been four maybe five but probably four and this deer was just going to be everything now that all being said it's just it's a shame it's just a mystery of you know shed antler hunting it's you never know where they are where they're going to be what happened to them if somebody else picked them up unfortunately and even if that's the case they could be out there in somebody's shed pile somebody's barn who knows but or the deer could have died or been shot either way it's the reason partly I'm doing these videos talk to Seth about it and putting them on his website their sheds and heads uh, it's just that who knows somebody may see it and then uh, recognize the deer and have the antlers or in fact have the deadhead and maybe they would like to have the antlers I mean we could always I'd love to talk to them anyway and see them there was one unique story that came out of these a guy uh, my nephew uh, met a guy that said he had found a dead buck in that area and uh, described it to Brian and Brian told me that it, it, he thought it could be in fact um, this buck we call Brutus I, although I never got to see him I always wanted to but I never did you know get in contact with that person never got in contact with me and, and I was never able to see him but 
it's just one, like we said, one of the unsolved mysteries of shed hunting. I, I love it. I love everything about shed hunting. It's, it's fascinating, and I hope that, that, you know, now that I'm retired and I have more time, I can get out there more, but areas are getting tighter and harder to get, and more people are doing it, which it doesn't really even bother me. I mean, if people have asked me in the past, uh, doesn't it bother you when you go there and you see all those young guys out there, you know? It's like, no, I, if they love it as much as I do, all the power to them. I just hope that, you know, an interesting story too, obviously, and not to ramble, but I met some guys shed hunting in the spot that I always go, and a couple of young guys, and they, they gathered up all the sheds they had found there. They were saving them like me, and, and we got together one evening. We pawed through sheds for two or three hours and compared what they had to what I had, and it was just interesting as ever, and, and that's what can come out of it. You never know if you're saving sheds for a series. You never know who has them or how you, you could come across them and, and get them and you could maybe have some lone shed in your pile that matches four or five that they have and nothing would make it you know me feel better than to add to somebody's you know enjoyment to give them a shed that would work out into their series but all that being said this is the story of Brutus I hope you enjoyed the the archive footage is pretty nasty I mean compared to you know the cameras and the footage of today but anyway it gives you an idea and it's just another uh, part of the series we'll call uh, uh, Through the Eyes of a Shed Hunter and this is Brutus.